Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we are going to pass a callback as props. You can pass state as props to child components, but you're not limited to passing data. You can also pass handler functions or any method that's defined on a React component to a child component. This is how you allow child components to interact with their parent components. You pass methods to a child like uh, a regular prop. It's assigned a name and you have access to that method under with, to that, met, that method name under this.props in the child component. There are three components outlined in the code editor. That my app component is the parent that will render the get input and render input child components. So here we have my app. That's the uh, class parent component. And then we have get input and render input, which are both child components. So it looks like we're going to put get input and render input in here. Add get input input get add get add the get input component to the render method in my app. Okay, cool. So we're gonna add the component. Uh, get input. And we see the get input's already added in here. It's showing up, it's rendering. Um, then pass in a prop called input and assign it to input value of my app state. Okay. So this one has a state with an input value. And so what we want to do is pass it in as an input at, called input, pass it a prop called input. We pass it a prop called input, and within input we're going to say this dot state dot input value. So that's state dot input value. Input value. Cool. Cool, and if we were to fill the default with ASDF, it would show up there. So that shows that it's working. Assign it to input value from my states, states. Also, create a prop called handle change and pass input handler handle change to it. Okay, I'm just gonna pull this out real quick. So here's the first one, and then our second one, I'm gonna just tab it out and just call, uh, what do we wanna call this one? Called handle change, handle change. And then we're gonna add to this one, it's going to be Oh, look, handle change is a method that's already here. And so we know, what, we, what do we want to do to handle change? We want to say this dot handle change. Also create a prop called handle change. Okay. This dot handle change. Okay, cool. So now uh, we've done the input. It looks like get input. Next, we want to add render input. So underneath this one, um, we're going to call render input. Uh, okay, render input to the render method in my app, then create a prop called input, prop called input, and pass the input value from the state to it. So we're going to say uh, this dot state dot input value, and then pass input and then create a prop called input and pass the input value from state to it. This dot state dot input value. It's important to say input value because that's the state input dot, this is the state and then we have to say dot input value in order to get this, what is an empty string right now. Uh, once you're finished, you will be able to type in an input field and in the, in the get input component, which then calls the handler method in its parents prop. Okay, so yeah, what's happening here? Our input value is this dot state, and then our input here is this dot state dot input value. And on the handle change, we set the input value to whatever it is that we've entered. And so our input render renders out exactly whatever it is that we type in there. Um, this updates the input in the state of the parent, which is passed as props to both children. So, yeah, it's just saying that because we set the cha the cha the handler over here in the in the value in the uh, in the input form, the state is actually being reflected down into the props of this one. So, our get input receives it, and it 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 it, 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 it sets data in this uh, main my app component. 
And then down here, we still, because we're just passing down the props, it also is pulling in from the props right here. And so in this dot state dot input value is being sent down the tree as a prop. Uh, so that's, yeah, I was just saying, observe, that's what we were doing. Observe how the data flows between the component and how the single source of truth remains the state of the parent component. Now this is, okay, oh look, they're about to say, admittedly this example is a bit contrived, but should serve to illustrate how data and callbacks can be passed between React components. What's great about this is if you change the something related to the state anywhere in the application, it's going to be reflecting automatically in this stuff, right? Useful programmer. Um, so yeah, that's the whole idea here is that you want to be able to recognize how this works. Now this might seem like, like they said, this might seem like a contrived example, but it's not. This is actually a very um, important um, concept. So I'm going to go over it one more time. First we have uh, my app and it has a state with an input value. Uh, the input, and then we have within the, uh, the object, we have what's a, a function called handle change. And we're binding the handle change object to handle this object. That's why we have to put this, this in there and, uh, and whatnot. So handle change is an event where uh, whenever it's triggered, Handle change is a function in which whenever it's triggered, it sets the state of the input value, which is this guy, to whatever is in the tar event .target value area, which is this way, this area. Okay, and then so then we render the uh, get input and the render input, and then what we do is, well, we, we render, we call if we, um, J, J, React automatically calls, calls, calls the render when, uh, well, it's actually being called somewhere else behind the scenes here, but it calls the render function, which makes it so that it prints out this single div. And within this div, it renders a two input forms. And the forms is, this is the one input, and then this is the other input component. It renders two input components, and these two are them. And so within this one, it has an, we set a prop of input equal to the state, this dot state dot input value. So we're saying whatever the value, oh no, we're saying the prop of this. So we're, whenever this is being rendered, we're saying the input value, the prop of input is equal to the state input value of the main object. And also we have the handle change function and we're saying handle change is equal to this dot handle change, which means it's equal to this function. And so we pass that to get input. Uh, this is a constructor, this is another component. Um, and then within it, we render the get input or the div, which contains an h3 of get input and an input value, which says whatever the this.props, so our, our uh, father component or mother, uh, our parent component dot input, meaning the uh, input, meaning the, the uh, props right here this.props.input, this.props, which is this, dot input. And so we're setting the value of this input to be um, whatever the state was of the my app component. And then on change, we're saying whatever happens, whenever this changes, whenever this input value f changes, we're going to say whatever this.props.handle change. This.props.handle change brings us to here, which brings us to the state of this handle change. And so you can see that even though this is a, a very lean component, it actually has access via props to functions in its parent uh, component, which is really powerful. And then finally, okay, so now that um, get input is rendered out, what we're going to do now is render, in, we're going to render the input, we're going to add the render input component, and we're setting the input prop equal to the state value, which is the same as the one above. And so once we do that, we can come back down, finish rendering the input. We've got our props. Our prop is just input. And then when we render this component inside of the only div that we're, the div we're rendering, we're render, we have input render, which shows up here. And then we're passing in the state of the objects via the props, this.props.input. So we're getting this.props.input from um, 
the super this dot props oops sorry this dot state dot input value and then once we're done with that we've rendered the components so again this might seem like a contrived example but it's actually super valuable uh, this is the kind of thing that helps you keep your code dry and understand architecture of front-end libraries. So I went into extra depth on it. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. See you in the next lesson.